Instead of focusing on all the weirdness in the world, subscribe to this channel, get a little bit of normalcy. I'm in a Lexus LC convertible. Have we forgotten how to have fun? Even putting politics in a worldwide pandemic aside, it seems like it. Using the automobile as a barometer, people have flocked to practical SUVs and crossovers. Sports cars and convertibles are becoming rare. That makes the new Lexus LC500 convertible a gift to humanity in so many ways. To begin, it's a drop top, yay for that. Also, the engine note is like a Wagner symphony. The open-air experience can be better than therapy in these mean times, and it's a piece of modern art, a free museum show for those who can't afford one. It's like watching a Henry Moore sculpture roll by. LC500 and the flagship LS500 sedan share an architecture that's just smart product planning on Lexus's part. There is a difference between the fixed roof coupe and the convertible, though. The drop top here is not available with the hybrid powertrain. And that's okay. There's no badge crowing that this car is motivated by a normally aspirated 5-liter V8 that's tucked into a nose larger than most home lots in San Francisco. It's the only engine it gets. Now, before I get into that, let's cover the top. The multi-layer cloth roof offers a number of benefits over a hard shell. It's lighter, so the center of gravity remains low, and it takes up much less space when down. It lowers in just 15 seconds. Add an extra second to raise it. The temperature inside the cabin is set automatically and takes into account whether the top is open or closed, including the heated steering wheel and a vent that blows warm air on your neck, sort of an invisible scarf. If you're in a hurry to relax, and let's face it, who wouldn't be in a car like this? The top can be dropped at low speed. And uh, there's the sky. I wish it was sunnier, but uh, beggars can't be choosy. Just glad it isn't pouring down rain. And suddenly, wherever you are, it's an instant vacation. If you've never driven a convertible, they connect you to the world in a way that closed cars can't. There are sights and smells you don't normally get. Wind management, it's pretty good in the LC. Now, the reason I'm wearing hat is because I desperately need a haircut. So uh, here you go. See, and no, I don't wear a lot of product. And it turns out there's a wind blocker that comes with the LC. Lexus didn't send it along, meaning things are even better than I demonstrated. Let's get back to the V8. It's something that the LS sedan doesn't offer. We're talking 471 horsepower, 398 pound-feet of torque, and the kind of soundtrack the LS's turbocharged V6 just can't offer, making the LC kind of special. That should explain why. Rear drive, the LC has a Torsen limited slip differential option. The 10-speed automatic transmission, not a dual clutch, gets joystick control, the kind I'm not all that crazy about. Uh, manual shifting, yes, and these magnesium paddles, wings really, feel great. There are drive modes with adjustable dampers. There's a noticeable difference when venturing into the sport modes. Easy or eager, every launch of the LC is Sonic V8 Joy. And that is the reason why I don't miss the hybrid powertrain. Figure the LC Coupe's V8 fuel economy average is a full third lower than the hybrid, but at a starting price of $102,000, convertible owners really won't care about that. A 60 mile an hour sprint takes 4.6 seconds in the convertible, and it feels soul satisfying in that smooth V8 way. What a great grand touring vehicle this would be. Okay, the trunk is a little bit small, but there's always the back seat for suitcases if you need that. Uh, it's powerful, it's comfortable with the top up, it's quiet. I've got the air scarf going on, my neck is toasty warm. Imagine going cross country in this. That would be a nice distraction from the craziness these days. 
The chassis structure is steel ingot solid, due in part to a cast aluminum brace in the rear that restores rigidity lost when lopping off the solid roof. Engineers that I spoke to said the LC was designed from the get-go as a ragtop. The suspension gets unique tuning from the coupe version. The rear setup is substantially different, with a reshaped and relocated suspension brace tower. That's where your money's going. If you're a true driving enthusiast and you really want to carve up a canyon road, then yeah, you might want to go with a Porsche 911 Cabriolet, but for everybody else, this is a perfectly wonderful experience, very controlled and buttoned down. There's road feel coming up through the steering wheel. Pushed briskly, this car obeys everything a driver asks without a hitch. Venture into track level shenanigans and there's going to be some understeer. At 4,540 pounds, LC convertible is even heavier than the coupe by 200 LBSs. That's a lot of mass to grind to a halt. Brakes are good, not track grade, but that's not the kind of car this is meant to be. I had this car for one full day, really, so there's no way to figure out the real-world fuel economy, and again, that's not important to owners buying at this level, even with the required premium fuel. But it is thirsty, I'll point that out. The transmission is the typical Lexus triple Teflon smoothness. You won't notice it at all, it's always in the right gear, this is the way a gearbox should be. Think it should have a dual clutch? Uh, Lexus engineers point to the new driving dynamic that they've set for the brand, which is best described as comfortable but engaging, sharper than Lexus of old, but never harsh. Even with 21-inch wheels, big bumps are fairly well shrugged off. There's all sorts of active electronic safety tech in this car, and it's standard. I'm having too good of a time just driving around, so instead of me rattling it off, I'm just putting it in a graphic here. You can read it. Is that good? Let's move on. The interior that you're looking at has the $5,300 touring package graced upon it. That means the front seat leather is semi-aniline and the headrests get embossing. It adds 13 speaker, 915 watt Mark Levinson sound too, and laugh if you want, CDs remain one of the best ways to get killer sound. The touring package includes climate concierge that automates seat and steering wheel heating, and that's important since you have to dig into the user interface to adjust those. There are no dedicated buttons. This large grab handle adds to a feeling where the cockpit envelops driver and passenger somewhat individually. It all looks spectacular, if not on the snug side. Not much in the way of generous storage. Uh, watch your wallet if you open the doors quickly. Even the glove box is on the petite side, and if you like coffee in large thermal mugs, <laughs> good luck with that. Check out the door, forged composite carbon fiber developed here in Seattle. The gauge cluster is a little small compared to big virtual screens in other luxury cars. Same with the head-up display. Android Auto, Alexa, and Apple CarPlay are standard. The unloved Lexus trackpad interface is still here. Uh, maybe I don't spend enough time with this setup, but I find it fussy and distracting to use while driving. I'm not dwelling on it, other to say that it's not a touchscreen, and I don't like it. Really thinking about going back there, are you? Ooh. I'll pass. I thought so. Since Evil Twin is left, I'll point out that the back seat is fixed. There's no folding feature to expand the trunk. Cargo room is not exactly massive in the fixed roof LC, so don't expect anything different here. At 3.4 cubic feet, it's not just two less than the coupe, it's significantly smaller than a Miata's trunk, and this is 33 inches longer. Just saying. Obviously, Lexus chose styling over packaging efficiency, so let's look at design. LC, any LC, is drawn up beautifully and doesn't chase other brands' design language. It's unmistakably Lexus with one of the best applications of the spindle grille to date. Same goes for the lightning bolt headlights, which are LED. 
With a front suspension significantly different from the LS sedan, the hood line gets lowered, giving the two-door a long, slinky silhouette. One of the most striking elements of the LC Coupe is the C-pillar, and there's no way to keep that on a convertible. A hardtop would have provided better security, but the cloth roof gives the car a more classic vibe. It's also lighter, improves handling, plus I can't imagine the trunk being any smaller. It would be hard to flip an LC over, but just in case, roll bars deploy from here. Seems like a lot of you like red light, green light, so I'm gonna keep doing it. It's sort of a recap of what I think of the car. Green lights? It's not just a luxury convertible, it's beautiful and distinctive. Don't buy it if you're in the witness protection program. Lexus nailed the comfortable and controlled blend of driving dynamics. And have I mentioned the V8 engine note? Yellow lights. For a large vehicle, the cabin is cozy with the back seats mostly there for appearances sake. Even if you can't afford the gas, an 18 mile per gallon fuel economy average is not exactly earth friendly. Not many can swing the payments on a vehicle this spendy. Red light. That's a mighty small trunk for a car this size. And of course, there's the Lexus trackpad interface. The people at Lexus understand that expensive convertibles tend to be flavor of the year emotional buying decisions. These days, that would be BMW 8 Series, Jaguar F-Type, Mercedes E and S-Class, before climbing up into Ferrari Portofino and Lamborghini Huracan Spider territory. Lexus believes a full one-third of LCs will be ordered as a drop top. Let's get back to that engine growl. Sonically and visually, this is a beautiful machine and a magnificent way to stuff some fun into life. Not overly practical, the Lexus LC500 convertible radiates luxury while bringing the world around it inside. Stop and think about it. 25 years ago, you could buy convertible versions of many mainstream cars. That's definitely dwindled. Mazda Miata, Ford Mustang, and Chevy Camaro, that's pretty much it when it comes to affordable drop tops. Like manual transmissions, the automakers are only going to build them if people buy them. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a car my wife did not want to drive, so Rob Calero doing the driving duties. <laughs> And we're wearing masks. Oh, yeah. Nicely done. For North American collectors out there, Lexus is offering 100 Inspiration Series models slathered in structural blue paint. The cabin is lined with bespoke Amalfi white leather, a unique navy top, and there's a matching two-piece zero Halliburton luggage set. That's all that'll fit in there. Talk to your local dealership if you have a spare 121 grand laying about. And uh, a tip, don't wear new Levi's in that interior. I speak from experience. Hope you enjoyed this little bit of normalcy in a very unnormal world these days. Jeez. A reminder, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, leave a comment, like the video. All of those things really help this channel, all right? If you do that, uh, maybe I'll do my NBC News Keith Morrison imitation. Uh, was it murder? People think I look like him or Pete Carroll or Harrison Ford or for some reason Anderson Cooper. I guess it's just the white hair. Uh, I don't think I look like any of those guys. They all look very different, but whatever. All right, that's Driven. I'm Tom Volk and none of those other guys. <laughs>